Like, hey, what's up, everybody? Um, welcome to the Squadcast. Sorry we're a little bit <laughs> late. Um, <laughs> I'm Camille, and joining me every week is Aaron, Steve, and Malik. We break down the latest news in the gaming industry. Um, we're just going to give a moment for everyone to send out their tweets. Meanwhile, I'm going to ask, how's everybody doing? Fantastic. How are you, Camille? Feeling good. I'm doing really good. Uh, we were talking just before we went live mm -hmm. about the Snyder Cut. Um, so I'm doing good that I saw that. Yeah, got those four hours out of your system. I mean, <laughs> I know. And you know what? I, I recommend anyone who has not watched Snyder Cut, do not watch it maybe, you know, two o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. because who you're going to be that? up late. That's what I not did. me. I did. <laughs> <laughs> did you do it too? <laughs> did you do I it too? Oh my God, that's funny. Like um, I dropped on Crave because like I could not wait. Um, and then I and then I was just too tired to continue. So I went to bed and then finished it later that day. Oh, so you actually watched it in two parts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Half and half. Whoa, that's like, I feel like, I can, how do you, I can, is this a trend now? Is this what people are doing now? Cause I, I feel yeah, like I can't do I that. Stop. It's a well, movie. They have chapters. They have like, oh. you know, like segmented yes. breaks where they're like, okay, this is arc one or chapter two, whatever they call it. I can't remember, but uh, yeah, there is like a, a good point where you can stop watching if you want yeah. and come back. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I guess you can, it'll be interesting to see how many like, I guess because we're watching movies at home more frequently, I wonder if people do that more often. And I'm just giving Caboose a hard time because he doesn't like Death Stranding. <laughs> Maybe. That may be the possibility <laughs> today. Um, but what we're going to talk about today, of course, is the latest in gaming news. Specifically, we're talking about Xbox and Bethesda finalizing their deal and Xbox officially welcoming Bethesda into the family. We're going to be talking about PlayStation buying Evo. Ooh. Really uh, surprising with that one. Square Enix, the their presents. I was going to be like, Square Enix presents. Square Enix presents. Uh, we're going to be talking about that. And the first 13 minutes of the Mortal Kombat 11, or Mortal Kombat movie. I don't know why I was going to say Mortal Kombat 11 movie. Maybe but one day. hey, that'd be a good movie too. <laughs> maybe one day. Maybe one day. So Caboose got the exclusive for Squad with that. Uh, but why don't we just kick it off with the Bethesda Ooh, news? How about that, I, Malik? This, I, I would consider buying an Xbox console mm -hmm. only for the fact Whoa. because they, they played this so well and the fact that they okay so they released 20 games from Bethesda's archive on Xbox Game Pass yeah. not all of them are available on PC though and then not all of them have FPS boost so I'll just go over the list really quick uh, you got Dishonored, Dishonored 2, Doom 64, Doom 2, Doom 1, Doom 3, Doom Eternal, Fallout New Vegas, Fallout 4, Fallout 76, you got Prey, Rage, Morrowind, Oblivion, Holy. Skyrim, you got Elder Scrolls Online, The Evil Within, Wolfenstein New Order, Old Blood, and Young Blood. It's such so many a bangers. That's a lot. Drop. Yeah, I was playing Oblivion yeah. again just to fill the nostalgia, and I love how janky that game is. Yeah, I, but, I went back to New Vegas, same thing. It, it was go. so nostalgic, but at the same time, like, oof, that's a rough game. <laughs> it's rough. And on PC, <laughs> some of these games have FPS boost, which in Fallout 4, amazing. So just mm. patching up some of the frames there, making it go a little bit, uh, you know, making things run a little bit smoother, especially in something mm. like Dishonored, where it's right. all about that movement, uh, is incredible. But the reason why I say that this is such a powerful move for them is for someone like me, especially PlayStation fanboy, to consider buying an <laughs> Xbox console for this is huge because I would just buy the streaming version, get Xbox Game Pass, mm. and I've got, what, 20 great Bethesda games at my hand? Not to mention, this is starting to look like the next Elder Scrolls and Starfield are going to be Xbox PC exclusives. And I don't see a world where you spend this much yep. money on a company and you don't make those two big titles exclusive. Damn right. You're exactly. absolutely correct about mm -hmm. that. I've been saying that since we heard about the acquisition, yes. you would, it would be foolish to not make those exclusives. 
And and I know Xbox has been playing the long game in the in the quote unquote console wars, uh, especially with Game Pass and everything. They just kind of sat quietly during the the PS4 Xbox One era because they knew they lost right, right. at the get go. So they kind of they sat quietly, figured out a new game plan. I think they have one. It's going to be really interesting to see once these games are exclusives, which they will be to mm-hmm. Xbox and PC, how people are going to react to that. 100%. $7.5 billion yeah. is the money that you spend to keep things the same. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah, this this is an obvious play at incentivizing subscriptions to Xbox Game Pass. I think that's their whole play right now is... They're not so much in the console war; they're in the streaming war. They want subscriptions. They want they want those ongoing uh, monthly payments. And yeah, you said that you know these franchises like Starfield, uh, Elder Scrolls, Fallout are going to be Xbox PC exclusive. I think yeah, that that's an obvious thing. But I also don't wouldn't say that it's out of this world to say that this is going to be used as a play for Microsoft to go dangle these IPs in front of Sony and be like, you know, th- you could have these. You're your user base could play these mm-hmm. games. It's just going to come with Xbox Game Pass. It's got to be on your yeah. consoles and run. And same thing with Nintendo as well. Uh, I think that's the big play here. This is to kind of to use these IPs as hostages <laughs> yeah. um, against, against <laughs> just to expand Xbox Game Pass to literally everything. So let me ask you mm-hmm. guys a question. Oh, Camille, did you have something you wanted to add? Well, I was just going to say that I just love the fact that Malik, as a non-console gamer, you're just really (laughs) excited to get a console Um, just because this is, you know, we don't get these reasons often, right? We get, you know, the PlayStation exclusives as to why console fans are like to their PC friends, you need a console. Um, But I'm loving the fact that we have another excuse now. It's like, get an Xbox for Bethesda. And so here is here is kind of uh, another question right Mm -hmm. is is xbox going to use deals and acquisitions to kind of bolster their system software sales or do you think that it's inevitable especially if sony breaks and i don't think it will ever happen but if sony breaks and allows xbox game pass to be on the playstation store do you think xbox gives up the hardware battle Mm. I think it's inevitable at some point. I don't think we're we're nor we're close to that being a, a reality. But I think that right. at some point, I mean, they're already talking about having uh, streaming sticks for Xbox Game Pass. They're already ta- yeah. talking with Samsung about in, like internal integration into TV sets. I think yeah, maybe by the time the Xbox Series X console um, age is is over with yeah they might just say okay xbox is just a platform at this point you don't need hardware anymore you can just play games through streaming something like steam Mm. or epic really yeah rather than and i mean when you look at xbox game pass 2 now they've got ea play as well Mm -hmm. which is huge and one thing i want to say about like this whole bethesda acquisition right is that i said before on the show that if Halo Infinite doesn't do well, Xbox is screwed. That's that's the end Big of time. their first party development. Mm. Yeah. With Bethesda, I don't know. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think that's the you, case. I don't think so. They, that's like the best safety plan you can ever hope for. Yeah. And also, too, it gives me a lot of faith for Starfield that it's going to turn out good. They're sure. looking at Cyberpunk 277. You've got someone like Xbox now supporting Bethesda. They don't want a PR crisis like that. They're going to let them make the game that they want to make, and it's going to turn out amazing. Because also, too, Bethesda can't survive if they make another Fallout 76. And and that's the unfortunate truth, because then you really start to question the future of their game development. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the cool thing is, too, well, okay, it's not a cool thing. Like, I wonder if it's a risk because Bethesda's kind of in a tough spot as well. Um, Yes, Doom was great, uh, but Fallout, one of their all-star franchises, also has its mm-hmm. issues as well. I don't think that's necessarily the case um, just because Bethesda has so many different IPs that they're working on that fans are really excited to see that we haven't even seen any um, footage of, right? Um but it'll be interesting as we get to see more footage of that and fans responses, if you know this Bethesda move is actually going to pay off for Xbox in the right way. Yeah. Focus on Starfield 
create a whole new IP where you can create new universes, new worlds, tell all these amazing stories because Fallout time and time again has kind of gotten old. Four really showed that they're mm. out of interesting story ideas and 76 was the nail in the coffin that they don't know what they want to do with Fallout anymore. It, it's like this It's like this weird, because where else do you really take Fallout? You know? I, I don't I don't necessarily disagree in that they don't know what to do with Fallout anymore and that they've completely mm-hmm. lost like a vision or an idea as to where to take that franchise. But I don't think it's dead. Um, I yeah. think when I when I think mm-hmm. back at like the Fallout 4 reveal or even the reveal for Fallout 76, when they just randomly go live on Twitch and hundreds of thousands of people are tuning in like that all that franchise, just the name alone carries so much weight. And so even if they they let it die for a couple of years and revisit it down the line, similar to something, not necessarily like Mass Effect died or anything, but similar to Mass Effect, where they come up with something like Andromeda, it's an absolute mess. They keep quiet on any like saying (laughs) the words Mass Effect for however many years. And then finally, they announce like a new one's coming. People are excited again because that's just the way that that franchise carries weight. And Mm -hmm. I think the same thing applies for Fallout. And especially once you think about mm-hmm. like how far off we are from getting a Fallout Five, like Starfield, if we're lucky, comes out this year, maybe next year. Right. Elder Scrolls is at least another three or four years after that, yep. and then you're looking at four years for a Fallout. People are going to be hungry for Fallout, especially I agree. especially after seventy six. Like I, I completely agree. Like I think that after seventy six, they kind of exhausted. Fallout Four was kind of murky as well, but I think with the right storytelling elements. I think that universe is ripe for great storytelling. I just don't yeah. think that they've been utilizing it in the past two games. I agree with that. And mm. I mean, one thing that I would personally like from Fallout to to make it a, a better game as a whole, re, rework the entire gun system, right? Yes. Mm. Shooting in Fallout has never felt good. Everything else about that game feels pretty decent. But if you were to adapt a more, you know, realistic or kind of tightened up shooting mm-hmm. system, I think that would improve the game a lot. I think that they've kind of started recycling ideas and they need to kind of take some time and let the Fallout series, you know, rest, like you said, Caboose. Yeah. But I, I think that the move now is going to be getting Starfield ready and then moving on to Elder Scrolls. Mm-hmm. But do you think that Xbox is going to release Starfield anywhere near Halo Infinite is the big thing. No. Mm-hmm. That's why I don't think Starfield's coming out this year. Yeah. Yeah. Unless they... I agree with you. Just because you don't want two space games yeah. at the yeah. same time. Um, especially, I think they still want... Xbox still wants Xbox, uh, Halo fans and Xbox fans to be excited for Halo and Xbox. I don't think they will have Starfield, an IP that's so new that was kind of marketed uh, when it was first revealed as like this big game that's going to be a huge adventure everyone's going to be excited about um, to release in cl- close proximity um, just because they want to learn from Halo as well. They want to learn about things that they might have got wrong, things that they did right, um, the confidence fans have in the concept yeah and i mean just going forward for the future of of game pass and xbox as a whole i guess what what's next for them yeah what what's the next move for them what do we think for for xbox you said yeah Um, i think i i again i think they're just playing the long game and there isn't like necessarily the next big move. They'll they'll cap the year with Halo mm-hmm. and let that be what uh, what closes the year out. And then as we enter the new year, I think 2022, we will see Starfield uh, and we'll start to get a little more of an idea of what the game's all about, what you can do in it. Obviously the announcement of the fact that it's gonna be Xbox PC exclusive. Um, at least that's the assumption right now. And I think that's a, that's a safe assumption. Uh, and then from there, they kind of just you know, assess the terrain. Are people excited for Bethesda games? Do they want to check out Starfield? Is that a big exclusive for them? Are people mm-hmm. still playing Halo? Can they let that run its course for however long and just ride the wave until who knows, maybe the next Elder Scrolls or whatever, right? I mean, I xCloud, I don't know if xCloud's still kind of like they're trying to do some stuff with that. I'm not oh, sure. Of course, yeah. Uh, I think I think the, the next big move is looking at the big picture and saying they have plus 
like 20 plus studios right now. Yeah. And going back to my, my thought of, you know, their big play is getting those monthly subscriptions. I think it's mm. to streamline the process where there's a there's a tentpole Xbox game coming out each month. So that mm-hmm. every developer yeah. is just cycling through their new games across, you know, two to three uh, year cycle. That way, everyone has an incentive to keep their Game Pass subscription active and not just right. bounce out. Yep. I think that's the big play. Yeah, I feel like for Xbox, we keep saying, how can they make Game Pass more affordable? And I think that's mm-hmm. their play. I think putting more value into Game Pass uh, with, Beth- with Bethesda, we've seen that already. Um, and I think we'll see a little bit more titles as well go to Game Pass. Um, so I, I think they're going to kind of play it safe for now. They've had this big news. It's also, you know, a tough year for development uh, last year and this year. So I expect things to be a bit slower than what we would would have anticipated if we weren't dealing with the pandemic. Um, But I think they're playing the safe game. They're going to just, you know, figure out where they're going with this partnership. They're going to make sure that their Game Pass has that value and go with Halo's release. And that's kind of what we're Mm going to see for the rest of the year. What are, so, and this will be kind of like the the last little talking and this call me crazy i need i need your tinfoil hat Camille. that's what i need what are oh i, I don't have it today what are the chances that we get another elder scrolls before <laughs> we get starfield because yeah, your the only the only mm. reason i say this listen listen one like you said it's going to be another we already have a space game coming out with xbox this year two elder scrolls have always historically been buggy but they are some of the most fun and like lore and story intensive games out there they could theoretically get away with putting out an elder scrolls game that's not 100 percent polished and keep working on starfield and make that a better game because you want the launch of a new ip to be perfect if you've got a game that's buggy every time it comes out but people still play it that's what makes half of the Skyrim content when it first came out. That was yeah. one of the reasons why it blew up was that YouTube presence of people just breaking the game. That might be my crazy sure. conspiracy theory, but you know. <laughs> I do think that you're a little crazy. I respect it. <laughs> I, I mean, I, 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 I would love to do all like You're right a little now. crazy. Um, but the only thing that, that really goes against that is that Bethesda has was really vocal when they announced Starfield and saying, moving forward, like the reason that it took so long for Starfield to even be announced was because they revitalized the whole engine. So moving forward, that means like Starfield, Elder Scrolls Fallout, it's all going to be on a reworked engine, improved over over the last uh, generations of games. So I, I don't think that they're going to rush an Elder Scrolls game, especially yeah. because it's Elder Scrolls. Like, why would you right. rush it out? Yeah, I, I, I just don't see it. And I think it's going to be at least another three or four years before we see that game on consoles. I, I think as well, like more than anything, I might have believed you before there was an incident with Fallout 76. <laughs> but with what happened with Fallout 76, I think Bethesda is terrified of releasing an unfinished game again. Um, yeah. And they know that Elder Scrolls is such a beloved franchise. And that Skyrim is like, to this day, one of the like, I mean, I haven't played it, but I know that people still consider it like one of the greatest games of all time, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and it's it's one of those games where like still on the latest console generation, you have Skyrim coming out. Um, so like they want to take their time with the next Elder Scrolls and make sure that it comes out in the best possible shape that it can and lives up to the hype and expectations of whatever Skyrim had set up. And then you look as well, like I'm sure mm-hmm. Xbox is in the same position. If they're going to make this an exclusive, if they want Elder Scrolls exclusive to Xbox, they want to make sure that game comes out and is the greatest game of all time because then people are going to want to buy their consoles for Elder Scrolls, you know? Yeah. And I think as also, remember, Bethesda put a lot of time into Fallout 76 and it wasn't the response they were hoping for, right? Um, So I think they're going to take their time. Elder Scrolls is a very beloved uh, IP. 
you know, fans will be heartbroken if that uh, is not as good as they're hoping it to be. Um, and so will Bethesda. Like, you have to think about all the money that goes into developing these games. There's a lot at stake, I think, for both Xbox and Bethesda. So they're, they're going to take their time, especially with Elder Scrolls. But it also depends how far they, al- they are along with Starfield. Absolutely. Like, maybe, maybe they are putting more time into Elder Scrolls. I know it's like all different teams, but maybe their attention is on Elder Scrolls. And in that case, we won't see Elder Scrolls or Starfield in like two years, two, three years, right? Um, if we do see an Elder Scrolls before uh, the Starfield. The other thing I just want to quickly point out that I don't see like a whole lot of people talking about is the fact that with this acquisition, other than like all these IPs, Microsoft owns the id tech engine, which is huge. Mm. Just to think about like what they could do if they collaborate. Just imagine like a Gears of War game running on EdTech. That'd be amazing. Come on. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing I know it's it's not really that headline stealer or whatever, but Microsoft also owns QuakeCon. That's 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 a big thing for you know oh. like a, a niche community, but uh, still, I, mm-hmm. I, I thought when they I don't know how many of you guys watched like the roundtable discussion uh, that they had, but when they talked about that, I was like, oh, that's that's great for that community of players. Well, it's more money going into exactly. those communities. So I could completely understand it. We'll have to keep watching uh, this whole Bethesda Xbox news yeah. as it continues. <laughs>